Hello, Ronnie. Hello, Luke. Hello, Lou. Can you America. hear me? <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> hey. Hey. Hey, ho. Hey, you go out to dinner a lot. Yeah. Whenever I go out to dinner, I take about 50 bucks and I go, okay, uh, 50 bucks. That's you gonna take your wife dinner. with you? No, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> 50 bucks, that's the cap, that's the limit. Here comes the check, it's $85. What? How does that happen? Uh, yeah, you ordered two, uh, two iced teas. <laughs> Long Island iced teas, <laughs> is that what it was? Well, it's probably because of your waiter. If your waiter did a good job, he took your 50 bucks and turned it into 85 plus a tip. Imagine that. Well, today on the show, we have secret waiter trips. Uh, sorry, tricks <laughs> that diners don't even notice. Or do they? And that's next on Men Are So Smart. Hi there, welcome to our show. This is Men Are So Smart, and I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Yeah, we're talking about uh, eating out. Mm, dining out, let's say. There you go. <laughs> when you're a server... Toby. <laughs> You don't know how funny that is. <laughs> when you're a server or bartender, wanting to rake in some tips, it's your in your best interest for customers to drink more, eat more, and genuinely enjoy the time they spent at your table. All of these things lead to a bigger tip in your pocket, and smart servers have learned how to play a game so subtle, most diners don't realize it's happening. It might help you re recognize when you're being played or just make you feel a little less special when your server hands you an extra after dinner mint. So now, Ooh. we present secret waiter tricks that diners don't even notice. All right, uh, pretty sure I've had this one done. They'll stare you down. What do you mean? That right Are you, there. You staring at me? Yeah. Uh, this waitress that uh, they spoke to uh, from uh, Eat This, Not That has a special, maybe kind of a creepy way, uh, of getting customers to buy expensive drinks. Okay, let's try this, Ronnie, all right? Uh, if uh, someone yeah. orders a Long Island iced okay, tea... Yes, say, I'd like to order a Long Island iced tea... Long... Dude, you're creeping me out. <laughs> Uh, they'll ask, the, then the waiter or waiter waitress asks, do you want top shelf or, and then, and then the stare yeah. without blinking. Give me that stare again. Do you, want, do you want top shelf? Whatever you say, dude, you're creeping me out. <laughs> she estimates that nine out of ten customers will order the top shelf if she stares long enough. Yeah. That's, yes. Look into my eyes. Ooh. These are not the drones you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> you want the top shelf. Your waiter, waiter or server, they'll never look too busy. No matter how busy they were, they always try to make themselves seem not busy, says a person who once worked at Olive Garden. She always wanted her tables to feel like they had her full attention, whether that's by bringing them another glass of water or pop before they're done with their current one or taking the time to talk to them a little bit. The tables that she took time on always appreciated it, and it showed generously in their tips. So never look too busy. They, you know, oh, sure, not too busy for you. Right. I'll tell you one thing. So we just ate at Chili's. And Chili's is great. Chili's sure. is every kind of food you can imagine. They have a kind of a special deal. It's called a three for 10. You get to order like a super salad and then your entree and then, I don't know, I can't remember, a dessert or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it's 10 bucks, 10 bucks a meal. Can't go wrong. You can't even do that at home. Yes. And um, we ordered, and then we all ordered uh, a drink. And before the waitress left our table, they were bringing our iced teas to the table. So what they have is they have like a little iPad that she enters the order on, and apparently somebody's getting our drink order back there. They brought the iced teas right out. I was impressed. I was thoroughly impressed. You know what, Chili's? You, you're you hitting it on all cylinders. Uh, okay, this next one that okay. waiters, waitresses might do, they'll give out freebies. 
Ooh, I'm all about the free 99. Yeah. Uh, every server knows that an upset customer means bad news for their tips. True enough. But there's luckily an easy way to get around most complaints. Free food. Yeah. Um, this is from a, somebody who works at a Mexican restaurant, says there were a few, few foods that cost the restaurant next to nothing to make, like sopayas. Uh, throwing these in to make an upset customer feel special was something we did to give the impression that we were giving more than we actually were. It's one of the easiest waiter tricks in the book. Hmm. And I have to say that one of the restaurants we went to, it's a Mexican restaurant, very good, by the way, um, but they don't serve free uh, chips and salsa. Oh. Which is unusual for a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. And it took a little bit longer to bring our food out than normal. And the person, I, I'm just kind of, I just sit there. I, I'm not one to complain because I don't, I don't like spit in my food. Right. <laughs> so, but the guy I was with said, said something and she goes, you know what? I'm going to bring you some chips and salsa while we wait for your food. Like Throw you a bone. Right. Like. Like every other Mexican restaurant? Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, it's about dang time. Yeah. All right, they'll choose, your server will choose their words wisely. Next time you're out to eat, pay attention to how your server speaks. Instead of telling a customer how much extra money something would cost, they would simply ask, would you like to add cheese, for example, or, or sour cream? That implies it's an add-on without making people think about price. Only if someone hesitated would I throw in the, it's only 50 cents more. Right. Wow, they got you coming and going there. Okay, I have a story to, about this. Okay. I, we were planning a, an anniversary uh, dinner for our academy graduation. And so there were three of us, and we were you know, talking about catered food and everything else. And we would have these meetings at a breakfast spot. Mm -hmm. And one day we were at IHOP. I love IHOP. IHOP is great. It's amazing. And so I can't even remember what I ordered. I, I typically, you know, get like some sort of a, like, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter. But what, the guy we were sitting with said, I'll have an omelet. And so... The waitress said, oh, well, you can, there's a, we have a build your own omelet page. And so he goes, oh, great. So he says, I'll have an omelet. And she goes, what, what do you want in it? I'll have mushrooms Good. and bell peppers Good. and onions Good. and cheese. Good. And he named off about, I don't know, like eight or nine different things. And ate it, and it looked wonderful. looked really amazing. And so when we get the bill, and we would split the bill three ways. Everybody pays for what they ordered. His omelet was like $17. Oh, my God. Because it was, the base price was $7.99. Uh -huh. Each item you added was $0.99. Cents. Oh, my God. And so... Someone really should let you know. He looked at the bill, and he said, is this right? She goes, yeah, you ordered blah, 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 blah. He's like, I did. <laughs> so I bet he doesn't make that mistake no. again. Yep. <laughs> All right. And, and this is kind of along that same line. Waiters and waitresses, they'll put higher price items on the tray as a display. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So they make up an expensive, brightly colored cocktail uh, and kind of parade it around the restaurant a few times. Uh -huh. Uh, there used to be a restaurant called Tiki Village. Oh, I remember Tiki Village. It was great. Was that on Fulton? No, yeah. it was on uh, it was Mar Marconi, Marconi and Watt, yes. Right. And they would have these dinner entrees that looked like a volcano, and they were oh, yeah. really, really intricate. I don't even care what it was, chicken or beef. Oh, I want that. Yeah, that's cool. That, yeah. yeah. That looks good. Yeah. So yeah. that's another way of kind of doing the same. People do that in restaurants too. What is what is, what is she having? Yes. Yeah. Oh, more often than not. Right. I'll have what he's having. All right. Next up. They act normal. <laughs> As a server, anything this lady says, anything I can do to make the customer interact with me, 
as a person increases my tip. It's as simple as wearing glitter eyeshadow so they look me in the eye or dropping my pen as I take their order or bringing two drinks because I claim I forgot which they ordered or accidentally saying something funny. The trick is to make yourself notable once early on and then just fade into the background. A nameless server who runs a flawless table gets 20%. A real person who fumbles her pen and then runs a flawless table gets 25. Well, hmm. that's so subtle. That's worth noting. Yeah. Yeah. Drop your pen on me. Pick that, <laughs> pick that damn thing up, lady. <laughs> All right, this next one. They'll give you an encouraging nod. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this uh, this ex waitress says that being taught to do the encouraging nod when she was suggesting expensive food or upgrades, if the customer orders a vodka and cranberry, you would say, "Grey Goose vodka and cranberry." Yes, please. <laughs> While slightly nodding your head and smiling, she says, usually the customer would say, "Yes." Or at least choose uh, choose another top shelf liquor. Then after the main course, you would say, "Wouldn't you like some heavenly cream br creme brulee?" Oh man, it is hard to turn that down. And you know what? I've noticed, and this is just human nature, but it goes right along with this. If you say hello to somebody, they usually say hello back. If you say hey to somebody, they say hey back. And it is just, if you nod at somebody, they're going to nod right back. I just did it. Crazy. They'll be accommodating as your server. Here's one you'll probably recognize. People love when you go the extra step to accommodate them. For instance, asking if they're celebrating something or do you have plans after dinner? Asking if they've been to the restaurant before asking if they have any questions about the menu. They swear going out of their way to make sure the customer has a good time leads to higher tips. Dang. I like that person that is always right there, but then they're gone. Right. You know? Um, they, don't, they don't hover. Right. I, I mean, part of the reason that I go out to dinner with my wife is so that we can talk away from our children. Yep. They're not children anymore, they're grown adults. But in any case, it's, it's nice to just, the two of us and nobody else interrupting us. Um, and I certainly don't want my waiter coming over and going, oh, would you like this? Can I get this for you? Can I just, just do your job and you'll get a good tip from me. You know what? I always tip well. Vicky and I went to a steak restaurant. I won't name them. I've already burned a couple. So okay. I won't name this one. You don't want to get ruled out of all of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we're sitting there. I happen to be wearing a Kings shirt, Sacramento Kings, which is the local basketball team. It probably was on sale. and Or I got it for free <laughs> when I worked for the Kings. I'm not sure. But uh, so the waiter noticed that and he mentioned it. I Bingo. Thought, I thought, oh, you know what? That's pretty cool. Yep. And then he stood there and he talked about it and talked about it. Yeah. And talked about it. See, and that's then, just it. And then talked about the Warriors. Right. And then, like, uh, yeah. dude, I just want as, to eat my dinner. As we're eating, yeah. he's standing there. Obviously, it was very slow that night. I guess. And we were in a part of the restaurant that is pretty new. The last time we'd been there, it, there was no seating back here. Uh, it was weirdly uncomfortable. If you have to say to them, could we have a little privacy? <laughs> yeah. There's a problem. Do you mind my wife and I talk? Along? Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. I'll be right here. Right. <laughs> I'm sure she'll have something as interesting as yeah. me to say. Yeah. Oh, now this next one, I've seen this a couple times too. They play the new guy card just a little too long. Oh. So I'm new here. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. three years ago on our anniversary, you were here. <laughs> uh, out of the many waiter and waitress tricks, a quick one for the better tips is to pretend you don't know what you're doing. I could pretend that all the time. I do it. Yeah. Fake it till you make it. You get bigger tips if you tell them I'm new, so you might have to bear with me. Mm -hmm. uh, the manager who trained me told us this and even encouraged us to keep doing it for as long as we wanted. 
She had one girl who did it for two years. See? <laughs> she was my waitress. <laughs> this I way, knew it. This way you look like a badass because you set the expe expectation that you might suck. Uh, so they think you're a rock star, even if you're only mediocre. <laughs> wow, that's dirty. Along those same lines, they'll know the menu or fake it. Uh, knowledge is power, they say. And when you're a server, it can translate to better tips, too. People will give you more money if you are knowledgeable because it makes you helpful. And they'll still give you money if you appear knowledgeable. Yes, they even suggest you fake it till you make it. Knowing your wines is a big leg up, but most of your customers won't know the first thing. So, until you get your wine knowledge up, just learn some basic buzzwords. Buzzwords. Light, dry, sweet, full-bodied, and people will believe you. It's a little oaky. How about that one? Yeah. Yeah. It's buttery. Yeah. Uh, of course, that's what my wife always is. <laughs> of course, people who know their wines will still see right through your charade. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This one, they'll get your drink order ASAP. So this goes, excuse me, this goes right back to Chili's. Uh, good waiters drop everything and get the drink order no matter how busy they are. You got to. When you get to a table and you're busy, drop everything else and take their drink order. Mm -hmm. uh, waiting 20 minutes to order a beverage is a lot more tolerable than waiting five minutes to even be noticed. Yeah. Um, so when Chili's brought the drink order while the waitress was still standing there, uh, color me impressed. Yeah, that was amazing. Okay, next up on our list of uh, secrets your wait staff does not want you to know. They know the social pressure is real, uh, real and when it comes to pay. Uh, you know that desperate feeling to look good in front of your friends? Some servers take advantage of that. If people split the check, use only one check presenter when you return with the credit card slips. Some people will tip more not to seem cheap to their friends. Ooh, social pressure. Uh-huh. Yep. All right. This one, and I've thought about this. Uh, waiters won't glam up too much. Oh, I get it. Yeah, you don't want to look too well off. Right. Uh, this one says don't wear expensive jewelry or watches. Uh, one of these waiters was talking about a guy he knew who wore a real Rolex that he got as a graduation gift. Mm, bad move. Yep. Um, the, I mean, people people notice that, and they're like, Psh, "Dude's got all the money he needs. He doesn't need a tip. He's got a four thousand dollar Rolex. Guy ought to right tip there. me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's probably uh, you want to be." You know, you want to dress nicely, but not, right. you know, no... Uh, Diamonds no on the soles of your shoes. <laughs> yeah, no designer brands. Keep it simple. All right, let's wind up with this one right here, Ronnie. Because this one, I always get this. If a waiter has ever made you feel extra special, don't get too big of a head. They probably do that for all of their tables. <laughs> it's one of the easiest waiter tricks to do with after-dinner mints. At the end of the night, if you leave mints on the table, give them the normal amount of mints. Walk away for a second, or look like you're thinking, and then give them a few more mints. Ooh. They'll think you're doing them a big favor yeah. by treating Yeah, wow. You ever notice? You ever notice? When you go out to eat, uh, and, and you're, you know, your wife's all dressed up, gussied up, looking good. You ever notice how the waiter always makes the wife feel more special? Yeah. Yeah. That's another one of those tricks, Ronnie. See, I would have thought that they were going to try to figure out who's paying the bill. Right. And then try to play it off to that person. Except that's money that goes to the restaurant. When it comes to the tip, they know the wife is not going to let the husband be a cheapskate when he's <sighs> been making her feel good You're all right. night long. Yep. So, yeah, who's going to pay the bill? But who's actually going to determine what the tip is? Yeah. And if you play it and you get, put it in the hands of the wife, you're going to get an extra tip. Yeah. Now, once again, I will say this. When I go out to eat, and it's honestly not that frequently, uh, but when I do, 
uh, the minimum that I tip is 25%. And Ronnie has a really good tip that I've been, I've been taking into consideration lately when it happens. Ronnie says you tip on the total before tax. Right. Okay. Well, so, we, yeah, we go oh, by, no, yeah. we go by the tax and double it because tax here is, uh, 8%. eight, eight and a little over 8%. So that works out to 16% and then you round up. So it usually works out to about 20%, mm -hmm. but then sometimes, uh, and I've had extraordinary service the last few times, I'll throw in another few bucks even. I I try to round up to an even dollar amount and sometimes an even five to ten dollar amount. So you know you what know. I tell the server? I go, look, please just make sure that our drinks don't go empty. Right. If you see that we're low, just bring another. You don't have to ask me. Just bring another. Right. All right? Because I don't want to be waiting for it while I'm trying to eat dinner. Right. And then you're gonna bring me a drink and that's gonna interrupt the conversation too. So <laughs> yeah. all right, some tricks. Your waiter doesn't want you to know. We hope you learned something today. Maybe you can put it into play when you go out to eat or drink or whatever you might like to do. Tip your waiter waiters. Yeah. But don't um, tip them over. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right. Uh, if you haven't already checked it out, our website is menaresosmart.com. Our show can now be heard on iTunes. What the what? In podcast form too, Ronnie. Yep. And you know what we do? We get a savings on the sarcasm, so we pass it on to you. Yeah. That's what we like to do here. Yeah. Because we're givers. Uh, my email address is lou at menaresosmart.com. Mine is ronnie, R-O-N-N-I-E, at menaresosmart.com. You'll find us on Facebook at menaresosmart.com. We hope you had a good time today. We appreciate the time you spent with us, and we will see you on the very next Men Are So Smart.